welcome to If Not For God, stories of hopelessness that turn to hope. Here is your host, Mike Zwick. If Not For God with Mike Zwick today. Mike, today's show is kind of like removing obstacles. <laughs> removing obstacles, absolutely, and, and sometimes walking right over them if you have to, or running through them. <laughs> or sometimes just pushing on them. Oh, yeah, <laughs> sometimes just pushing on them. Uh, but you know, it's, it's interesting, Robbie, we were, we were talking about this a little bit, you know, before the show and, um, there's so many people that I meet who get frustrated and, and, and they, they say, oh my gosh, I'm having to deal with this problem and that problem and the other, but you know, overcoming obstacles, I believe is really a part of the Christian life. Um, it's something that Jesus talked about. Um, it's something that's in the book of Acts and the book of Revelation, um, and even in the Old Testament as well. And um, one thing that I think that you see about God, that one of the things that he loves is somebody who perseveres, somebody who overcomes obstacles. And as a matter of fact, as we're looking before the show, um, some Bible verses about overcoming obstacles, it says Psalm 27, verse 1, it says, The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? Certainly not an obstacle. Uh, Isaiah 41, 13, for I am the Lord, your God, who takes hold of your right hand and says to you, do not fear that I will help you. So he'll help us in times of obstacles. First Peter five, verse seven, cast all your anxiety on him because he cares for you. Psalm 56, three, when I am afraid, I put my trust in you, not in money, not in friendships, not in relationships, but we put our trust in the Lord. Matthew 6, 25 through 27, therefore I tell you, do not be anxious about your life, what you will eat or drink, not about your body or what you will put on. Is not life worth, worth more than food and the body more than clothing? Look at the birds of the air. They neither sow nor reap nor gather into barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not of more value than they? And which of you, by being anxious, can add a single hour to his span of life. And, and so we were talking about it and, and we were talking about obstacles. Um, but Robbie, one of the things that he had told me before I actually, when I started doing the, doing the show, um, he said, Mike, he says, you've got to realize, he says, when you want to do a radio show and you want to tell people about Jesus Christ, he said that there are going to be, that the enemy is going to come after you. And, and I realize now he wasn't saying that to be mean. He wasn't, you weren't saying that to try to throw me off course or get me upset. It's a fact. I mean, I, you know, I've had several things that have had several obstacles that have come my way since I've, um, since I've come and, and done the show. And one of them, I remember I, I severely got sick. Um, I had a virus that was so not the Corona, <laughs> but I had a very severe virus, um, about a month or two ago. And at one point I was actually lying on the floor. Um, and my wife said I had passed out and I had fallen into the other room where the baby was sleeping and the kids were screaming and she was shaking me and, and this and that. But I remember another thing that you had told me after that, Robbie, you said that, Mike, you said after you go through that trying time, he says it will bring you closer to God and you will be so grateful for how how close that it brought you to God. Um, and I remember when that happened, I, I felt like I was about to die. I mean, maybe I was, maybe I wasn't, but... You know, I said, Jesus, help me, Jesus, help me, Jesus, help me. And as soon as I said that, and this has happened before, I broke out into a sweat and I started to feel better. So a lot of times on the other side of these obstacles, we see the beauty of God. Um, and Robbie, you were actually telling me a story about a guy who was pushing a rock. Yeah, there's a story told about a man, <clears throat> God came to him and, and there was a big, huge rock right in front of his cabin. Mm -hmm. And God came and told him, I want you to push on that rock. I want you to push on it every day, all day, with all your strength. I want you to give me everything you got and put everything you have as to the Lord. I want you to push on this rock. Well, he pushed until he just got totally exhausted, tired out, sore, you know, went to bed and not just... You know, this went on day after day, drudge after drudge. This thing didn't move a centimeter. The more he pushed, the more he wondered, you know, if it was even possible to move this rock at all. Well, sure. of course, Satan, being who he is, uh -huh. you know, trying to steal, kill, and destroy, and uh -huh. would certainly like to hurt God's feelings, uh -huh. he, he, he starts to pour into the guy's mind that, you know, you ain't going to move this rock. Yeah. You know, 
I don't know what God thinks he's trying to pull on you, but, you, you know, you don't have what it takes to move this rock. That's I don't right. know what you're thinking. And, and so after a couple months of this, the guy gets to the point where, gee, I, I think I need to go back to God. I need to pray and find out what the story. Absolutely. And so he prays, God, you know, I've pushed and pushed and done everything you've asked me to. I've done it, served you exactly like you ask, and this, this stone hasn't moved you know, an eighth of a centimeter. I mean, it isn't moved at all. Uh And I just want to make sure that I'm, you know, in your will, because I just feel like I've totally failed you. Right. And God compassionately responded, my son, (laughs) Uh you have done exactly as I have asked you to do. I didn't ask you to move the rock. I asked you to push on the rock. And as a result, you know, your arms are stronger, your, you know, your back is like iron, your legs are, you know, these great big well-honed instruments, sure. you know, you are now strong for the fight because, again, the mission was not originally to move the rock, but, but it was to make you stronger, as I'm sure many of us have experienced in our faith. And I, you know, I can't help but think about Paul. Okay. And, and I find the Christian life to be more like this than not. Yeah. That the, that everything comes at a price, and the better the fruit, the higher cost it is. Mm-hmm. Like, you know that Paul was on track because he got beat for it. <laughs> you know, he was stoned. He was, uh-huh. he was shipwrecked. He was snake bit. You know, he was ill. He was imprisoned. All the, all the persecutions that came to Paul because, you know, Satan was terrified yeah. of, of what Paul could do. And it's been my experience as I've seen people – you know, grow in ministry, and the the most heartbreaking one I can think of right off the top of my head was Bob Young, mm. um, one of my Christian junkyard guy. Just a t- phenomenal testimony, a enthusiasm for the Lord, and spoke, you know, on my show. I don't know how many times. Okay, and his son um, struggled with an opiate uh, uh, addiction, okay. a- and then he was born again, and he got baptized. And he came and he did on my on my show, and I think when he did that, I actually told Bob something similar to what I told you. I said, "I'm afraid, you know, don't that Satan is going to have a bullseye on Rob's back." Right. Well, on 109. Now remember, Bob's 109. You pull it on 109 uh-huh. of that year. You know, Rob relapsed and, and went to be with the Lord, and oh my gosh, uh, I mean, oh my gosh. Um. It was it was a horrific thing. It came at, with such a cost that I don't even want to think about it. Mm-hmm. You know, losing my son, and it was his only son that was his natural born son. So mm-hmm. it was it was you know it was an obstacle. It was an obstacle, but as a result, you know, God knows the fruit that He's going after. But this tough stuff. Well, it's interesting. I have a friend of mine, Chuck Reich, and he's down and he lives in New Mexico now. But one of the things that he told me um, is that, and I know we believe in grace and we believe in, in, in God's grace and provision and all of that. But one of the things that he told me one time is he says, Mike, he said, you can sin. And he said, and God will forgive you if you ask for forgiveness and you mean it from your heart. He said, but sin has consequences. Mm-hmm. And so maybe there's somebody who's listening today and you say, well, you know, I, you know, I'm sinning or I'm living in sin and, and well, God's just going to forgive me if I ask him. And, and yeah, that's true. But really, if you, especially you look in the Old Testament where you see people who sin, even David, you know, anybody, he sins and then he keeps talking about how he has all these health problems. He has all this and that. He says, because of my own sin. And at least he saw that. And at least he asked God for forgiveness but if you're living in sin right now, we want to encourage you to stop because <laughs> there are consequences to sin. Um, we've seen people lose families. We've seen people lose friends, lose jobs, lose careers. Now, Jesus will forgive you. He'll still love you. But don't just go into it and continue to sin because you say, well, Jesus is going to forgive me. We need to learn to avoid that as well. Um one of the other things that we're talking about overcoming obstacles, I see James 1, 2 through 4. It says, consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters, whenever you face trials of many kinds, because you know that the testing of your faith produces produces perseverance. Um, you know, it's, it's funny when I talk to Christians, non-Christians people as well, when they're going through tough times or persecutions or whatever it is, 
<laughs> the last thing that they see <laughs> is pure <laughs> joy when they're going through those things. Uh, have you seen people, whether yourself or somebody that you know, Robbie, who may have been going through those persecutions or may have been going through those tough times and where you saw them say, thank you, Jesus, or they considered it pure joy? Can you think of any examples? Yeah, Cameron Horner, um, who had his own show here for a time, he he was involved in a diving accident mm -hmm. and and actually became a paraplegic. And and I've seen him on more than one occasion, praise God, and consider it pure joy for the an obstacle that I really, really can't even believe or right. think of. But when I look at my own life, actually, I was thinking about, it, as you said it, that, you know, the year 1996 was the year I was diagnosed with cancer. And after I finished my last chemotherapy treatment, after I was healed from that, mm -hmm. was the year that the Jeep crushed me. Mm -hmm. But if you looked at my journals, um, which the Lord has given me the opportunity to use over the years, you would see that how many times I quoted that very verse, consider it pure joy. And, and it was the best of times. It was the worst of times. Because there's an interesting thing when you come up against all these obstacles. Sure. The love of God pours out for you in a unique way when you're diagnosed with cancer. Mm. That when you get crushed by a car, or, you know, people show up at the emergency room to visit. You know, there's all sorts of ways that God will send you um, pure joy um, that you don't get. You know, unless you happen to have a special need for it. So again, th there's a high cost of of all these things. But the beautiful thing is that it it it, it is pure joy when to again reflect back on it at this point. When we get to heaven, we're going to really see um, what a joy it was that God walked through us, walked with us through Absolutely. these you know particular things. When you when you were talking about that, I remember I had a. Uh uh, something that was in my grandmother's bathroom um, when I was a kid. And you may have seen this story. Uh, Robbie, it was Footprints. Oh, yeah, yeah. Have you ever seen that? Of course. And, uh, it, and, it, and I was in your grandmother's bathroom many times. <laughs> <laughs> no, but actually, it's, it's Footprints in the Sand, and it says, One night I dreamed a dream. As I was walking along the beach with my Lord, across the dark sky flashed scenes from my life. For each scene, I noticed two sets of footprints in the sand, one belonging to me and one to my Lord. After the last scene of my life flashed before me, I looked back at the footprints in the sand. I noticed that at many times along the path of my life, especially at the very lowest and saddest times, there was only one set of footprints. This really troubled me, so I asked the Lord about it. Lord, you said, once I decided to follow you, you'd walk with me all the way. But I noticed that during the saddest and the most troublesome times of my life, there was only one set of footprints. I don't understand why, when I needed you the most, that you would leave me. He whispered, my precious child, I love you and will never leave you, never, ever, during your trials and testings. When you saw only one set of footprints, it was then that I carried you. We'll be right back with obstacle or sand walking <laughs> on If Not For God. If you're trying to sell your home and you're sick of your realtor telling you they can't get your price, thank Todd Harrison. Call me. To sell your house for more money in less time and with no hassles, call 919-274-5532. Hi, this is Todd Harrison, and this is a great time to find out what your house is worth. Call me at 919-274-5532. Together, we can sell your house for more money in less time and with no hassles. The Todd Harrison team is affiliated with Keller Williams Realty. Welcome back to If Not For God with Mike Zwick. When we left our hero, he was being carried <laughs> in the sand, those footprints, Mike. But we're talking about obstacles today and that mm -hmm. like, wow, God allows these things in our life. And sometimes, you know, we would really like to argue with him over it. <laughs> Absolutely. And, and one of the things that I was talking about a little bit before in the show was that when we sin, um, that God will forgive us if we ask him for forgiveness, um, but also not to take sin lightly. And the reason I say that is because there are consequences for sin. And Robbie, you said you wanted to mention something about that. Yeah, I, I have a lot of friends that know I spend a lot of time in the Old Testament, including my father, you know, before he went to be with the Lord, would often ask me, how in the world could this God of the Old Testament seem so judgmental? <laughs> mm. <laughs> who, who would, you know, take out Aaron's sons because they 
offered the wrong incense or stone Achan and his entire family because he held the devoted things out of Jericho or, you know, wow, he, he, he slaughtered, you know, hundreds of thousands of people because David numbered the people. Hmm. And, and you look at that and you wonder. And that's a beautiful thing because to me, in that end of itself, Michael, if you think about it, it's an obstacle. Yeah. It's an obstacle. And so by pushing on that obstacle, which I've done for a number of years, sure, it's made me stronger to see, wait a minute. You know, God knows things and God understands death at a level I don't understand it. Okay. And who knows what Aaron's boys would have gotten themselves into as a result of offering that false incest and what uh, incense and what it might have meant for them leading Israel and all the different things that would have been horrible tragedies might even cost us the Messiah. In other words, God had a definite plan that had to take place. And and even the the, the people killed as a result of David's choice, mm-hmm. which seems absolutely, like you say, sin has consequences. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Now, God set up the rules, and it's kind of like gravity. You can argue all you want to, but okay. you're still, you know, you can say, well, I can fly, but you jump out of that plane, things are going bad. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's going, you know, and, and, and so David jumped out of the plane, yeah, and, and things went really, really bad. But as a result, you know, you have the threshing floor of Obed-Edom where the Temple Mound becomes because it's a critical point in, in biblical history. God allowed it. Yeah, Satan was involved in it. Clearly, if you look in Chronicles, it says that Satan, you know, um, enticed David to do it. And interestingly, I think in Second Samuel, it says that God enticed him. But the, the real deal is God let Satan do it because <clears throat> God knew that all these things were part of what was going to happen because David was a critical player, mm-hmm. you know, in the story. Okay. But I love what you're saying about in Job, like we think we know some stuff. <laughs> well, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, we, you know, we, and, and when you were saying that you, you were telling me a little bit before that somebody died and you said they were healed one way, which means. Oh, oh this is beautiful. Let me tell that story. Cause it's, it's just beautiful. If you saw Tony Evans son, which I wish I knew his first name, but I don't give the eulogy for, um, Tony Evans' wife when she passed away this year. It was absolutely one of the most remarkable things you could ever see. And so Tony Evans' son was saying, I wrestled with God in prayer. You know, he was trying to push this rock. He was pushing and pushing on this rock. And then he was like, God, don't you see how much glory it would bring you if you healed Tony Evans' wife and look at what a wonderful woman she was and and what a saint she was. And God told her, this told the young man, he told him this beautiful word. He said, you do not understand. You don't understand death. Mm-hmm. I mean, number one, she gets to go be with Jesus. So he said she was either healed. Mm-hmm. The, the moment you said the prayer, actually before you said the prayer, she was either healed or she would be healed. She would either be with family <laughs> or she would be with family. <laughs> she would either be with Jesus or she would be with Jesus. She would be loved or she would be loved. And then I didn't even tell you this part, my favorite part of the whole All thing. Right. And P.S., I can handle my glory. <laughs> I can handle my glory. That's right. That's right. Um, the, you're you're absolutely. And, and, and what what it told me, Robbie, was when you were saying that if she if she passes away, she's healed, and if she lives, she's healed. It, it reminded me of Job thirty eight, and this is what you were saying before, where Job, all these bad things happened to Job, and he didn't sin. But he started belly aching and saying this and that, whatever. Well, Job 38, it says, Then the Lord answered Job out of the whirlwind and said, Who is this that darkeneth counsel by words without knowledge? Gird up now thy loins like a man, for I will demand of thee and answer thou me. Where wast thou when I laid the foundations of the earth? Declare if thou hast understanding. Who hath laid the measures thereof if thou knowest? Or who hath stretched the line upon it? Whereupon are the foundations thereof fastened? Or who laid the cornerstone thereof? When the morning stars sang together and all the sons of God shouted for joy, or who shut up the sea with doors when it break forth as it, had, as it had issued out of thy womb, when I made the cloud the garment thereof and thick darkness a swaddling for it and break up, breaked up for my decreed place and set bars and doors and hitherto shall thou come, but no further and here shall thy proud waves be stayed. And he goes on and on and on. And basically what he's saying is, you certainly know more than I do, Job. <laughs> you certainly know a whole lot more than I do because you're telling me how, how to do it and what I'm doing right and what I'm doing wrong. Um, 
And we've all met people in our lives, and I'm sure there's been times in our life, well, God, why is this happening to me? Oh, this was me. I mean, this is this whole thing. I thought I was God. In fact, I probably two or three times a day told him, you know, how things <laughs> should have gone. I mean, it, this is this one strikes home way, way, way too often for me, Mike. Like, mm-hmm. oh, my goodness. I think he should have done this. I think he should have done that. <laughs> but, again, you know, the beautiful thing, like we talk about, is man, he he he's got this under control. <laughs> That's right. That's right. The the one of the things that that I've heard many times is that you know it, it's and and you've said this before and we've touched on it is that when we go through these trials and we go through these temptations, and, and Jesus said this. He said, if they persecuted me, what do you think they're going to do to you? <laughs> it's going to be tough for us. And 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 and, and I'll say this as well. Whether you're a Christian or whether you're not a Christian, you're going to go through tough times. How much greater are those tough times going to be when you've got Jesus with you? In the end of times, at the end of the day, when we pass away, <coughs> Jesus wins. We win. There, there, there's a battle of Armageddon where all of the nation, where all the nations of the earth are going to gather up on Israel. Well, who wins that battle? God does. And doesn't it say something like he blows his breath and they're 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 gone? Yeah. I mean <laughs> out of his mouth comes a sharp two-edged sword and yeah. That's a feast that's Re- coming. Absolute revelation and I'm looking at Revelation 22 and I'm going to look at the uh, the NIV where it says then the angel showed me starting verse 1 then the angel showed me the river of the water of life as clear as, as clear as crystal flowing f- from the throne of God and of the lamb down the middle of the great street of the city on each side of the river stood the tree of life bearing 12 crops of fruit yielding its fruit every month and the leaves of the trees are the healing of the nations no longer will there be any curse the throne of God and of the lamb will be in the city and his servants will serve him they will see his face as you were saying before, they will see his face and his name will shall be on their foreheads. There will be no more night. They will not need the lamp of a, a, a light of a lamp or the light of the sun for the Lord God will give them light and, the, and they will reign forever and ever. Then the angel said to me, these words are trustworthy and true. The Lord, the God who inspires the prophets sent his angel to show his servants the things that must soon take place. Look, I am coming soon. Blessed is the one who keeps the words of the prophecy written in these scrolls. And what what I want to encourage somebody who's listening today is that, you know, yeah, you may be going through tough times, but in the end, things are going to be great. Heaven is a wonderful place. We're not going to have any more problems, any more crying. It says he's going to wipe away every tear from our eyes and things will be wonderful. Things are going to be better. Robbie, do you think about this sometimes when you go through tough times? Oh, I think about, I, you know, that's certainly one of the huge, huge issues is where is your hope, you know? And, and, and interestingly, in William Gurnall, he pointed out that in Ephesians, the, the, it talks about the helmet of salvation, mm. but in Thessalonians, it's the helmet of the hope yes. of salvation. Yes. And so one of my hopes is clearly... You know, it says several times in the book of Revelation and throughout the Bible, he's going to make all things new. All things new. All things new. Mm. In other words, all things, Mm -hmm. which for me include, you know, that dog I loved. Okay. It, 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 you know, all these different things. I, in my mind, I think God knows the things that I dearly love and loved and whatever, and he's going to make all things new. I mean, the, there's so much hope for me right there. Like, oh my goodness, that's my dad, that's my mom. That's right. You know, and my, and my mom said it one time, you know, as she was getting older and her friends were dying, that the older I get, the more of my treasure is in heaven. Well, <laughs> yep. <laughs> that's so true. I mean, so phenomenally true that, you know, um, our heart keeps going there. Mm-hmm. And, and the beautiful thing is, like Tony Evans' wife, you know, he, he, he now realizes that a lot of his treasure is in heaven. And, and you know, sometimes I wish, I wish that we could stop there. But as it goes on in Revelation 22, it says, um, 
in verse 13, it says, I am the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last, the beginning and the end. Blessed are those who wash their robes that they may have the right to the tree of life and may go through the gates into the city. But outside are the dogs, those who practice magic arts, the sexually immoral, the murderers, the idolaters, and everyone who loves and practices falsehood. I, Jesus, have sent my angel to give you this testimony for the churches. I am the root and the offspring of David and the bright morning star. And that if you're walking with Jesus and if you're a Christian, yes, you have that hope. But if you if you're not walking with Jesus and you're not and you don't and you're not a Christian, there's eternal separation from God. But it doesn't have to be that way. You can give your life to Jesus today. You can ask him into your heart. And Robbie, I'll let you. Yeah, I mean, the beautiful thing is a eternity without love, without joy, without peace, without patience, without kindness, without goodness, without faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. That's eternity without God. Yes. And everything that is good and true and whatever is available, but you need Jesus. Yes. You need his blood, his sacrifice to pay for those things that we're talking about that are in our life. And by offering that in prayer, you can do that right now. Pray with me. Jesus Thank you for yes. dying on the cross. I believe you did that for me. Yes. I believe that your sacrifice will cleanse me of my sin. I want to be reconciled to you, Lord. I want to follow you, Lord. Yes. Lord, put people in my place to show me how to get into your word, your Bible. Show me how I can walk closer with you and turn my life over to you yes. that I too can spend eternity in heaven. Yes. And we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. And, and we believe that if you prayed that prayer with Robbie, uh, you've been born again. Um, Find yourself a good Bible-based church. Um, if you don't have a Bible, um, you can contact us here at the Truth Network, and I'll make sure that you get a Bible. Um, God bless you, and uh, we hope to hear from you. We hope to see you here next week. Thank you for listening to If Not For God with Mike Zwick. For more shows, subscribe on iTunes to If Not For God. For more information on Mike or to contact him, go to ifnotforgod.life.